Hi, today I'll show you how to visualize the expected trajectory of a physics object being launched from a certain position. This could be used to visualize player jumps, this could be used to visualize ball trajectories in sports games, artillery shells in military games, and so on. So let's see our scene and let's see what we have and let's see the demonstration. The first thing we have is a little blue cube that's hiding a ball inside of it. This is going to be our launch point. We have a line renderer that's showing the line of the ball's trajectory, and we have a hit marker that shows exactly where the ball's going to land. So let's see if our prediction is correct and if our algorithm works correctly. So let's click fire. Our ball is launched, and it landed exactly where we expected it to land. So let's try changing some parameters and see if it works for other cases as well. So let's change our launch velocity. There we go. Let's click fire again. And there we go, we can see that our ball landed exactly here, it was following this trajectory precisely, and we know everything works. So let's see how our scene is set up and how our code works. In our Unity scene, we have a simple launcher object, which has our component trajectory visualizer attached, as well as the line renderer, which is going to be the line renderer that's actually rendering the path of the projectile. As a child, it has a sphere, which is our little test ball that's being launched, and the hit marker which is currently disabled. Now that we see how our scene is set up, let's see how physics works and how we can actually calculate the trajectory before we go into the code and how we can implement it. We have our ball launched from a starting position with a starting velocity. We now have to calculate how that ball's position and velocity will change over time. The easiest way to do that is to determine a time step and then do a certain amount of calculations per each update cycle. Now, of course, we can either do a certain amount of calculations or we can determine that we have detected a collision and stop calculations altogether. In each calculation step, we have our object's current position and velocity. To get the new velocity, we have to add gravitational acceleration to it multiplied by the time step. After we have our new velocity, to calculate the new position, we take the old position and to that we add the velocity multiplied by the time step value. The result is the new position in our calculation, and we can proceed to the next step, storing the newly calculated velocity and position as the object's current position and velocity. However, this is not always accurate as sometimes objects collide, and we have to check that case specifically. So in each calculation step, we will fire a ray in the direction of our object, and then we will see if we hit anything, and if we did, we will return that point as our new and last point, instead of the newly calculated position based on velocity. Now that we understood the concept, let's go through our code. In the top, we have our launch velocity. We have our time step, which is set to the Unity's physics default time step value, which is 0.02, or in other words, 50 times per second. We have our max calculation steps, our tolerance variable, which is the tolerance value of the line renderer component, in short, the higher the value, the more crooked and less dense the line renderer will be, making it look worse. Of course, the less lines and the less points you have, the more optimized your game is, so this is a trade-off for performance. And we have our show hit marker boolean. We have our hit marker game object, our line renderer, we have our raycast hit variable, and we have the points that we're going to pass through to the line renderer. We have some debug stuff, which is the fire boolean, which is used as a trigger, and our test body, which is the ball in our scene. In our awake method, we simply get our line renderer component. And now inside of our fixed update method, which is run every physics stick in Unity, which is 50 times per second, we draw the trajectory of the object. Now, first we want to see if we want to show the hit marker or not. If we don't want to show it, we simply set it to active to be false. We get the object's current position and velocity, and then we clear the current list of points that we want to draw. Then we initialize the boolean collision variable. We get the next position and collision status from the getNextPosition method. Now let's go to this method, it's right over here. And as you can see, what we do is we first raycast from our current position in the direction of velocity. We store it in our raycast hit and we want to see how much we want to go out there. So we want to go velocity.magnitude, so how large the, uh, how, what the magnitude of the actual vector is, multiplied by the time step. So that's how much we want to check for the collision. Now, of course, if the collision did occur, we're gonna enter this block right over here. 
And if we want to show the hit marker, we have to set it to the active to be true. We have to set its position and rotation to the hit point and the look rotation of the normal of the hit point. And then of course, since it's going to be rotated the same way as the object that it's hit, we do not want that because we want to have the, our marker facing away from the object, or in other words, we want to rotate it by 90 degrees on the X axis. Now this of course depends on how your game marker is set up, it might be different for you, you have to experiment. And of course, if we have got a collision, we return the hit point as our newest and latest position, and then we return true as a collision flag right over here. As you can see, we return collision detected true. Of course, if we didn't detect the collision, we don't want to set the hit marker to be visible, so we set it to false. And then we return the current position multiplied by the velocity times the time step. And of course, we set the false value because we did not detect a collision. So we have our new position and whether or not it collided, we add that position to our points uh, list. Now, of course, if we did collide or if we ran out of the budget for calculations, we simply break out of the while loop. And then lastly, in our while loop, we change the velocity according to our gravitational acceleration. And that, of course, depends on physics.gravity and the time step value we used. Once we have gotten out of the loop, or if we ran out of the calculation steps, or if we got a collision, we then set the position count of the line render to be the amount of points we have added to the array. We of course then set the positions of the line render, and then we can simplify using the tolerance value. Let's see how the parameters behave once we have them in game, and now that we understand how they work in code. So if we increase the time step, the calculation accuracy will be off. As you can see, it changes a little bit because it's not as precise. And if we hit fire, you can see it starts to miss it. And even though it's kind of accurate, it's not really accurate. Of course, if we reduce the time step and hit fire, you can see it follows it much, much more accurately. And it's basically perfect. Now, of course, we can reduce the max calculation steps. And if we keep reducing it, you can see that if we hit this point, we have already hit the maximum amount of calculations and the line will not render any further. Now, of course, we can also change the tolerance to see how that affects it. And as you can see, the more I increase the tolerance, the more jagged the line becomes. Thank you all for watching, I hope you learned something today, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and I hope you have a nice day, bye bye.